Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's Last Post Ceremony. My name is Robert Adams, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Warrant Officer Class 1, Joanne Davis. We warmly welcome the family of Private William Robert Gillam, whose story will be told shortly. This evening, we are honoured to, hon honoured to acknowledge His Excellency General, the Honourable David Hurley, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, and Her Excellency, Mrs Linda Hurley, and the accompanying delegation. Mr Keith Payne, veteran and recipient of the Victoria Cross, for his service during the Vietnam War, and Mrs. Flo Payne and the accompanying delegation. Today is Mr. Payne's 90th birthday. Sir, we wish you a happy birthday and thank you for your service. We warmly welcome the dignitaries and visitors here this evening who will be attending Mr. Payne's birthday celebrations later in the evening. As always, we welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. The live stream of this ceremony is made possible by the Returned and Services League of Australia and the RSL and Services Clubs Association. We welcome members who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family, visitors to the memorial, and students on behalf of Patterson Public School from Patterson, New South Wales. If you are able, I now invite you to please stand and join in singing the national anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they have done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 103,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations over more than a century. But first we present a lament flowers of the forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the pool of reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Private William Robert Gillam. William Gillam was born in July 1898 in the town of Bury on the New South Wales south coast. Known as Billy, he was one of two children born to the town clerk, George Gillam, and his wife, Louisa. When Billy was four years old, his mother passed away. His father remarried soon after, and Billy grew up in Bury alongside his sister and three half-brothers. He attended the local public school and later developed a love of cycling. Billy briefly worked at the Berry Post Office before moving to Sydney, where he found employment as a telephonist. Weeks after his 18th birthday in July 1916, Billy Gillam enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force. He was assigned to reinforcements of the 37th Battalion and after two months of training in Australia, he embarked for active service, sailing aboard the troop ship Benalla. Private Gillam arrived in England in early January 1917 and proceeded to camp to continue training alongside other recruits. His arrival on the Western Front was delayed by illness and he did not join his unit in the trenches until the end of November. Having missed the bulk of the fighting at the Ypres salient, Gillam spent the remainder of 1917 undertaking routine training and trench maintenance during a very cold winter. Early 1918 was marked by the start of the German Spring Offensive, which began five months of heavy fighting along the Western Front. Gillam's unit was involved in attacks around Ypres and Armentier, fighting desperately to hold off the enemy's advance. During a raid, Gillam was employed as a runner and bravely distinguished himself by carrying messages across no man's land and through heavy barrages to reach Allied lines. He was later awarded the Military Medal for his actions. He was then detached to Brigade Headquarters for two weeks before rejoining his unit towards the end of June. After intense fighting, it became clear that the German Spring Offensive had failed and the Allies began planning an offensive of their own. The attacks began on the 8th of August 1918, employing an all-arms approach. Infantry, tanks, artillery and aircraft were all used simultaneously to overwhelm the enemy and allow the Allies to rapidly secure their objectives. Two days into the offensive, Gillam's 37th Battalion was involved in an attack aimed at capturing the village of Proart. As the men advanced on their objectives, they were attacked by German aircraft before being pinned down by machine gun fire. The 37th Battalion was forced to withdraw before dawn, having lost its commanding officer and a quarter of its fighting strength. Following the setback at Proart, Gillam and his comrades continued continued to play an active role throughout the offensive, which successfully pushed the enemy back to its final line of defence. On the night of the 29th of August 1918, Gillam's battalion was involved in an attack near Cleary Copse on the Somme River. As the men approached the village, they discovered that a number of enemy posts had not been cleared and they came under heavy fire. Eventually the enemy was overcome and the Australians continued into the village where the German troops appeared in large numbers. The battalion was forced to withdraw, only to discover that the enemy had reoccupied the trenches at the rear. Coming under heavy machine gun fire and shelling, the Australians were forced to retreat. During the fighting, Private Billy Gillam was killed in action. Gillan's mother later received a letter from General Birdwood, who wrote, On the 30th of August 1918, the 37th Battalion took part in our offensive east of Amiens. Strenuous opposition was encountered at a place called Cleary Copse. Your boy, with his company commander and two others, moved forwards from the copse to a trench in advance of it. While doing this, your boy was killed by an enemy shell. I'm only thankful to know that he had no suffering, which will be of great comfort to you, for the death was instantaneous. 
It must be some consolation to you in your sorrow to know how bravely he fought and gave his life in the cause of right and liberty and that his noble sacrifice has not been in vain. Billy Gillen's body was never recovered from the battlefield. Today, he is commemorated on the Australian National Memorial of Villas Bretonneau, among more than 10,000 others who have no known grave. He was 20 years old. Private Billy Gillen's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, amongst almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. A photograph of Private Gillam, alongside his father George and brother Charles, is displayed today by the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private William Robert Gillam, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. If you are able, I now invite you to please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we the left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director, staff and volunteers, we thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support during the memorial's development project. We wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you. <laughs>